Welcome to Dig Deeper, a Leaky Foundation videocast. My name is Beth Green, and today we're talking with Dr. Robert Martin. I'm Bob Martin, and I'm Curator of Biological Anthropology at the Field Museum in Chicago. And I work generally on primate evolution. I've devoted my career to trying to reconstruct the evolutionary tree of primates. And the reason for that is that I firmly believe that if we want to understand human evolution, we are going to do a better job if we understand primate evolution in general. So why is this type of research important? What can it tell us about ourselves and our evolution? People often ask me why what I do is important, and <coughs> the, the main thing that I answer is that we can draw lessons about ourselves that are important for medicine. People often talk about what is unique about humans, and one of the things that unique is unique about us is our arrogance. And we think we can live beyond biology, and we cannot. And so we really need to understand our basic biological adaptations and get back to a closer resemblance to, to why we evolved. Who or perhaps what inspired you to get into this field of research? I've been very lucky in my career. Things are quite often accidental. I had wonderful teachers when I was at school, and I had a, a truly excellent biology teacher who in fact wrote the major textbook that was used in, in England when I was growing up. And then when I was doing my PhD, I studied under Nico Tinberg and, and uh, Conrad Lawrence, who both got the Nobel Prize for Medicine in 1973, and they switched me on to animal behavior. Have you ever had a eureka moment? What was it like? One of the most exciting points in my career was when I was working on data. I love crunching data. And I've had two main interests. One has been in primate reproduction, and the other has been in the brain. And it was by pure chance that I had those two interests, but I gradually realized that they were connected. And eventually I realized there was a connection between energy and the brain. And I couldn't quite work it out until one day I realized that it, the energy is supplied by the mother. So during pregnancy and during suckling, the mother provides the energy for brain growth. By weaning in mammals generally, brain growth is virtually over. So all of the resources are provided by the mother. And that led to my maternal hypothesis of brain evolution. Tell me about a time you had a challenge or a setback in your research. You know, I, one of the disappointing things was that soon after I published the ideas about uh, maternal energy and brain evolution, it was attacked on statistical grounds. And a number of people uh, dismissed the idea uh, for statistical reasons. Uh, but it's turned out that uh, if you try to apply some of the sophisticated new statistical techniques, uh, you have to have excellent data. And people were doing it with lousy data. And I'm really, really pleased because in the last three years, two papers have emerged that use good data and have confirmed what I was saying. What do you think makes us human? You know, I always answer that there are three uh, unique things about humans in, in our evolution compared to great apes. One is that our jaws and teeth have been completely remodeled. The second is we have a brain that's three times bigger. And last but not least, we walk upright. But in fact, if you look at the fossil record, all of those things started way back in the evolution of hominids after we diverged from chimpanzees. And so if you ask me what is unique about our species, then I would say language, spoken language. Uh, that is unique. That is one of the few things where there are no parallels among other animals. And uh, it has certainly been very important. The question is, when did it evolve? If you could find the definitive answer to any human origins question, which one would it be? One of the things that has struck me in my work is that a big mistake is being made in timing 
when uh, primates evolved and when humans evolved. The reason for this, there are now lots and lots of trees based on DNA evidence. But DNA doesn't give us time. So if you want to have time, you have to ask somebody who's familiar with the fossil record. Now, the problem is if you ask when did the species Homo sapiens evolve, then a, a paleontologist will tell you the earliest known skull for our species is 200,000. But people don't realize that's a minimum date. We can always find tomorrow a skull that's twice as old. And people are using these minimum dates as if they were actual dates. And this has led to aberrations like saying that we diverged from chimpanzees five million years ago. This is a minimum date. The real date is probably about eight million. What is your favorite thing about the research you do? The favorite thing about my job is I have enjoyed it from day one. I have had fun for 40 years and I don't intend to stop.